Okay, so this is a video of the test review for the first unit test in Calc with Applications. And to start number one, A, I'm gonna use point slope form. So we've got y minus negative five equals m x minus negative two. So any minus a negative is really plus. So this is the equation for in point slope form. But if you look at the answer key, it's in slope intercept form. So what we have to do is multiply by 3 fourths. You can use your calculator to multiply that. And then we're going to subtract 5. So if you're going to use your calculator, we'll go 3 over 2 minus 5, and then math, enter, enter, gives us minus 7 over 2. And this is the answer. So part of your test is multiple choice and part is free response. If it is free response, make sure you write your answer in the directions, the way the directions ask. If it's multiple choice, you have to match your answer. So this might be an answer choice or slope intercept form might be an answer choice. Okay, let's do B. For B, I have to calculate the slope. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And when you calculate that in your calculator, you get negative one half. You can pick any point to use to write your point slope form. So I'm gonna pick the first one. So that is your point slope form equation and you can modify it to find slope intercept. Now for C, we first have to take this equation and isolate y to figure out what the slope is. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. So 2 is the slope. And the question asks for parallel through this point. So I'm going to use the slope 2. Hang on, let me get closer to the problem. So it's going to be y minus 1, because of the 1 here, equals 2, and then x minus 2. So that is the equation in point slope form. I can modify it to find slope intercept. And now let's do D. So the same thing for D, we first have to isolate Y to figure out our slope. So I'm gonna subtract the 5X. Divide by three. So now when we go to write the equation, since it's perpendicular, we take the reciprocal and make it negative and that is our point slope form. Okay, for number two, sorry I keep hitting the stand my iPhone's propped up on. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. Okay, for number two, first I need points to write a line through. I do year 1994 as year zero because that's our starting year. And then 1996 is two years later so we need our slope. Use your calculator. We get 2,200. And now what's nice is this is our y-intercept because it's when x is zero. So I can write my equation in slope intercept form instead of point slope form. Then the rest of the question says, what will your salary be in the year 2000? So the year 2000 is six years past 1996. I'm sorry, 1994. So I'm going to plug six in. To my 
equation. And we get $41,700. Number three is similar, except instead of years, they give us at the beginning. So we've got zero and $25,000, and then 10 years later, $2,000. So first we need our slope. going to be a negative number. We have our y-intercept. So part B, so that's part A, part B says when will it equal $13,000? So that's the x, not the, I'm sorry, that's the y, not the x. So I put the 13,000 on the left side. Subtract this over. Divide by negative 2,300. Let's see, 12,000. 2,300 gives you 5.217 years for X. Okay, number four is kind of a weirdly worded question. On the test, I'm not going to give you these separate variable costs. I would combine them to say $16.75 per hour, and that will help with part A. Okay, so for A, writing the cost function is variable cost plus fixed costs. Part B is the revenue function. We're gonna earn $27 per hour Part C is profit, which is revenue minus cost. And you have to be careful when simplifying because this negative gets distributed. So then we're going to do 27 minus 16.75. So that is 10.25x minus 36,500 profit. Oh, you can't see that, sorry. And then D, break even point is when profit equals zero. So what I'm going to do is add this over to the left. Divide by 10.25. And we get, uh, let's see, 3560.98. And what is it? We are going to be precise and label our answers hours. Hours. Don't forget your units. Okay, for five, oops, sorry, there's no earthquake. We want to sketch a graph. All right, I'll do it on my paper here. We have time and speed. So the car is driving along and slows down, then it's stopped at a red light, and then it starts driving again. All right, the back. I'll do six on the here too. You are given a diagram with three graphs. When you work at a job with an hourly wage, your income is a function of time. Okay, so let's say if I get $10 per hour, 
as the hours go on, my money goes up. So that's graph two because income increases at a constant rate per hour worked. Okay, for seven, we have to look at proportional, either direct or inverse. So if x times y equals the same number, it's inverse. And I'll do y over x equals the same number, it's direct. Automatically here for multiplication, I know these are not going to equal. So let's try division. Can you see my calculator? Yes. So I'll do 3 divided by 6, 6 divided by 12. Oh look, they're all coming up as 0.5. Oops, make sure you type correctly on the test. So. For all of these, when I divide, we get 0.5, and that is direct proportion. Let's try multiplying for B, since we already used direct, maybe this one will be inverse. 4 times 0.5, 8 times 1, uh-oh, those are different. Not the same, so it is not inverse. Let's try division. Oh, look, they're all coming up the same decimals. So again, y over x, what was that decimal? 0.125. So again, it was direct. Okay, for number eight, I need to make some tables so that I can graph that function. You can use your calculator, but I'm gonna write them out so you can see my thought process. Negative 2x plus 10, I want to use x values 2 and greater. So let's do 2, 3, and 4. And then plug them in. So let's see. We get negative 4 plus 10, negative 6 plus 10, negative 8 plus 10. Then the negative x plus 2 part is every x less than zero. So I'm going to do zero, negative one, negative two. Plug those in. You can use your calculator to plug them in, that's fine. So let me get a grid here. All right, so for this first ray, we're going to go to two, six, but that's going to be an open circle because it's not or equal to, it just says greater than. And then we'll go to three, four. And so we get this ray going down to the right. Then at two, we have a y value of two. So that's a dot. And then less than zero. Oh, I should have given myself more space over here. We go to zero, two, and that's an open circle. Negative one, three. And we get this ray going up to the left. All right, for nine, oh good, I don't need any tables for nine. It's just these y values. So from zero to two, we're always at a y value of two. And it's a closed point at zero because of the or equals. Then the next one, we're at four, closed and open, closed and open. So that's a y value of six from four to six, and then a y value of eight from six to eight. Not or equals is open, or equals is closed. Everywhere else is closed. The only ones that are not or equals are the open. So you will not have a bunch of open circles inside your segments. Okay, and number 10, we've got a long distance phone call, 25 cents, each additional minute or fraction of it is five cents. Okay, so the cost. For the first minute, so when my time is up to a minute, is 25 cents. The next minute adds five cents. The next minute adds another five cents. 
Let's go one more. And then the next minute, it's gonna add another five cents. So six minutes and 22 seconds is between six and seven. So see how this bottom number is the one multiplied here? So we're gonna do six times five cents. My handy calculator. And that is a 55 cent phone call. Okay, this third, the last review page, negative four. I have to figure out which piece to plug that into. So I say, is negative four less than or equal to two? Yes, yes it is. So I plug that in there and get negative eight. Three, is three less than or equal to two? No. Is three greater than two? Yes. So I plug that into this piece. The parentheses are important because of your exponents and negatives. Negative three. Five is also greater, so it goes into the bottom piece. Check this out. If you hit second, enter, it brings back up what you typed, and I can just go replace those threes with fives. Negative 29. And 10 is greater than two, so it goes into that bottom piece again. Second, enter, brings back up what I typed. Oh, that's okay, wait a minute. If you do second delete, it allows you to insert, so that way when you type over a double digit, you get more space. That's negative 164. More telephones. 47 seconds is between zero and one, so that's 28 cents. A minute, 13 seconds is between one and two. Oops. 46 cents. Okay, 15 minutes is exactly the, or equals. So if I look at this pattern again, the 14 is gonna be times the 18 cents. Oops, not a decimal there, thanks. Here, let's just cover that up. So it'd be 28 cents plus 14 times 18 cents. And that's $2.80 for that phone call. And copying. 15 copies is between zero and 25, so I'm gonna plug in 15 to the X here. Calculator, $1.80. 50 copies is in the second piece. $4.50 and 250 copies this is the or equals part so it goes with the six cents a copy $15 okay now that you've seen me do the test review you should be able to do all of it with no help before the test Print a blank review and do it again as many times as you need to until you can do the entire thing with no help, no notes, no videos, just you, your pencil, and a calculator.